Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Real Reefing TV. I'm Cody Grates. This is the underside of my 300 gallon reef tank. This week, we're gonna go over the plumbing. Every Friday, we're going over a new aspect of this reef. If you've missed some of the previous videos, please go back to the beginning up here and, uh, and then come back to this video once you've watched the previous videos. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. There's a lot of great content coming out every week. It's going to be packed full of stuff that I wish I knew when I was starting in the hobby. There's a lot of different ways that you can set up the plumbing on your reef. So what I did in my build when I was designing it is I wanted something that was going to be kind of eye-catching. So it had to have some type of stand appeal, if you will. Um, I also wanted it to be easy to put together, but also easy for maintenance later on. If I ever had to take it apart or move something from here to there, it'd be easy for me to, you know, cut the plumbing or disassemble it and reconfigure it in a different way um, that would make sense without having to scrap the entire thing all together. Then the last thing that I wanted to do was I wanted something that was going to make my reef quiet. I wanted something that was going to be, the plumbing was going to be completely quiet in this thing because I know my last tank, it was, it was always like gurgling and making a ton of just waterfall noise going down, which, you know, trying to hear the TV. Actually, we had to, uh, had to get in my apex and hit the feed mode probably about four or five times throughout a movie so that we could get through a movie in our living room. That's how loud it was without the way that I have this set up. So we'll go over those three aspects coming up. Make sure you stay through the whole video so that when you're planning your build, you have everything that you need to get going. So the first thing was stand appeal, right? I wanted it to look good. Look good is just as much as it functioned well. So as you can see, what I used was some white PVC just from Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, but what I did was I picked up some acetone. Uh, you can buy it right there at Home Depot and Lowe's as well. You get some acetone, you put it on a rag, and you can wipe that lettering, that black or red lettering that they put um, along the side of the PVC pipe. So that'll give it that nice, clean, white PVC look that you're going for. Also clean off any stains and things like that. Make sure when you're picking out your PVC that it doesn't have any like scrapes along the side of it or burrs and things like that because that'll create gaps in the joints where you glue it together. Plus it just doesn't even, it just doesn't look good. So then what I did was I got on Amazon and found these red PVC fittings. They're awesome. They're made for like putting furniture together, but they're perfectly good for also, you know, for putting together your reef. So I'll drop the link in the description below so you guys can pick those up. I think they ended up being around two bucks a piece, which isn't that bad, especially when it looks good. And I'll talk more about how I integrated the sump with the coloration as well, but I just thought that this red and white looked really good, especially with the fittings um, for the ball valves. Those were white and red as well. I think I picked those up at Lowe's. Um, I think they were six bucks a piece, something like that. So these true union ball valves kind of bleed into the next section, which is ease of assembly and ease of maintenance later on. These true union ball valves have a union on both sides of the valve. Also, the valve turns a lot easier than those traditional ball valves that you either have to thread in or uh, glue in. They don't stick as much, so they're a lot easier to adjust. Um, for the next part, uh, which number three is making it silent, right? Like I said, it was just super loud on my old system, so I wanted to build this thing so that it was super quiet. So what I did was I installed ball valves on the drains that are coming from this reef. Now, this is a th uh, marine land, 300 gallon deep dimension tank. So this tank has two corner overflows, one on each, uh, each back corner, obviously, as, as the name suggests. And in those, traditionally, it would be set up as a Durzo. So you would have a Durzo standpipe, it would come up, and then it would have an elbow and come down, would have like an air vent on top, and the water would go down. Now those are semi-quiet, but you can still hear them 
um, kind of water crashing as they come down. So what I decided to install on this system was the Herbie Overflow. But what that does is it takes what's traditionally the Durzo standpipe, you take that out, that becomes your full siphon um, overflow. Then the, uh, then the other pipe that comes up for the return, that is converted to your emergency drain. Now, when you do that, you're, you're out a hole out the bottom, right, for the return. So what you have to do is you have to plumb your returns to the back and over the, uh, to kind of like the back of the tank, over the back, and then drop down in. Um, so I went ahead and, uh, and did that. Now when I plumbed the return, also there's another, uh, let's see here. Now back here, after we come off the, come off the main return pump, up through a, up through a union, to an elbow, and then across, we come up to a T here. Now, this T comes up, and I've got a couple of those red fittings coming off, and then doing a couple of true union ball valves. Now, this is a type of manifold what this manifold comes off one is for whatever I need it for in the future and then the other one comes off and uh, goes through my media reactor GFO and carbon which I just replaced um, a couple of days ago now on the other side on the other side around here of that uh, kind of uh, cross row PVC fitting um, goes down into a John Guest fitting and into a uh, small ball valve which is also turned off that ball valve will control um, the uh, water inlet to my refugium that'll be coming in here pretty soon which will then go into uh, a bulkhead and back into my sump so nice and passive um, filtration there through that now that also goes up you have another couple of goes up from that t Oh, sorry, goes up from that T and then goes into a couple more ball valves, which then go around to the back side of the aquarium, up the back, and so I know it's kind of hard to see here, but it'll come up the back through a couple of check valves, which is nice so you don't drain down a, an inch of a uh, 300 gallon aquarium. And then on up to a couple of kind of like sea swirls. Um, these are ocean motions. So uh, what they do is they oscillate the water back and forth to give me some random motion. Um, and uh, I want to give you guys kind of a bonus tip when you're setting up your plumbing. What you want to do is throw some lines on there, kind of dry fit everything together and then throw some lines on there so that you know when you're gluing it together that you've got it glued back properly and in the right, uh, in the right spots. So this is how it should be running when you're running a Herbie overflow. You have down here, I know it's, I know it's kind of hard to see, but there is a standpipe that's about six inches lower than the emergency drain. The, uh, the standpipe has a, has a grate over it or a strainer, that way no snails get in there and clog the drain because it will be running a full siphon. That's what keeps it completely silent. Now over here, the emergency drain will just have a little bit of water kind of trickle over the inside and down the drain. Um, that way, if there's any change in water flow or anything like that, it can, it can handle it. Also, if your full siphon valve does happen to get clogged, it can take over the extra load. Makes sense? Another thing I want to tell you about when the water is coming down from, uh, from the tank, when it's being uh, drained into the sump, it, it's restricted by those uh, by those ball valves, and that's what keeps it at the full siphon. It keeps just a little bit going down those drain, uh, down those emergency drains that I was talking to you about. When that water does come down, what it's doing is it's going down here into the first chamber of my sump, which is there's nothing in it. It's just a small chamber for the water to rise up and flow into the filter sock chamber. Now, what I have is I have it just about you know, 
an inch below the water surface. You don't want it too far below because if it does need to burp out the water in the system, you need to give it the ability to do that. The further it goes down, the more pressure it takes to burp out that, burp out that air so you don't get that gurgling effect. So again, you can create that full siphon when the, when the pump kicks back on after being off for a little bit. So just having it a little bit under the water reduces any splashing noise from the emergency drains. If there's one thing that I think that I could have done better with this system on, is I think I could have put uh, gate valves on my drains instead of ball valves. So I kind of cheaped out a little bit and I wish I wouldn't have. I wish I would have spent the extra 40 bucks um, for, the two, uh, for the two valves that I needed to buy. So about 80 bucks in total. It sounds expensive when you're buying all these plumbing parts and you're trying to cut costs, but using a gate valve is just so much easier to tune. It's the one with the uh, with the little um, kind of like the spigot. If you were to go outside your uh, to your spigot, um, it's kind of the one with that. So what it has is an actual gate that moves up and down and restricts the flow of water, as opposed to a ball valve, which has a literal ball that moves inside of there that restricts it. So it's just easier to get minute and small changes, which really affects how your tank is draining upstairs. Hey look guys, that's it. So in, hey look guys, that's it. So the few things I just want to do in, 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 in place upon you or whatever, um, the few things that I just wanted to give to you guys is, you know what? Make your plumbing fun, you know, make it a part of your reef, make it a part of your, your own creativity. You know, we spend a lot of time and, uh, and, and you know, pouring ourselves into, into our reefs and making it ours. Why not spend that extra little bit of time and the extra, you know, 50 bucks on the plumbing and make it look as good as everything else in our reef? and not just some vinyl tubing going from our return pump and shoving it up onto a hose barb, right? So take a little bit of time with it. Have some pride in it. You know, give it some stand appeal, you know, and, uh, and make it easier for yourself later on. If you wanna move something somewhere else or you wanna add a reactor, put in, um, you know, a nice little uh, manifold there so that you give yourself options later on. And then finally, set it up thinking about the future, thinking about where this aquarium is gonna go and how much you actually wanna hear it. You know, I didn't wanna hear it very much, so I spent a little bit of extra time and research on uh, putting together that uh, putting together that Herbie overflow. But you know what, you could also uh, go with the bean animal overflow, which is supposed to be safer and even quieter um, and, and, cre and, and have a little bit less um, maintenance required with it because every now and then I do have to tweak it just a little bit so again have some fun with it make it your own listen I appreciate you watching this video again every Friday we're going over a new aspect of those of this reef so if you haven't subscribed yet consider doing so if you like the video give it a big thumbs up I'd really appreciate it and